G'day, welcome. My question to you today is, do you want to look like this when you're recording your workshops or doing your presentations? Or would you prefer to look like this? Or even be that little person in the bottom of the screen and have yourself cut out nicely? Well, if you do want what I've achieved, then watch this video and I'll show you how I've done it. This is going to be a bit of a messy video. I'm using a little bit of software called Minicam. Now, minicam.com, if you do want to use the affiliate link, um, thank you, it helps support me. I'm going to show you the inside outs of using Minicam. Now, I am actually using uh, a bit of software called Stream Deck, which uh, works well with Minicam, enables me to flip between different looks the limitations, there are a few limitations. For example, I am at the moment using my iPhone as a virtual camera and it's sending my signal through quite nicely and I could use it as a secondary camera, which could be ideal if I was doing like product photography and I wanted to be able to flip between another camera without having to set up the big flash camera that I'm talking to you on now. The camera I'm currently using, what a lot of people who do these little videos don't tell you, is a Sony A6400 and I've got, that cost you around about $1,800 New, New Zealand with the kit lens and then I went and bought another lens uh, that is uh, lets, allows me to go down to 1.8 and record at uh, 25 frames per second which gives you that nice smoothness that you wouldn't normally see and if that means anything to you it basically means I'm focused and everything in the background is nice and blurry. But what I'm going to show is what you don't normally see is I have a blue screen behind me. So when you are trying to accomplish a perfectly cut out image, you really do want to be able to have a green screen that is lit up evenly without crinkles. So you can see that I have got crinkles on my green screen. And I'm just going to show you what I do to set mine up. So there's things that you can do. I'm going to flip into mini cam and I'm going to show you how I've actually uh, set up. No, I'm not. I'm going to go back to my green screen. I'm got, I've got a chroma key, which basically means that it does recognize I have a green screen and it'll be looking for anything green and trying to remove it. I'm going to select auto and you can see that it's just instantly cleaned me up and I'm pretty good. Even if I stand back here under my light, I'm still pretty cool. If I didn't have a green screen and I just put replace, you'll see now that I'm green. And I used to use a program called OBS, which is free open source software, which a lot of people use it because it's free. And I always looked like a green monster from The Muppet Show, and I just didn't want it with Minicam. It gives me the ability to keep my natural skin colors, and I like it a lot better. So I've got a chroma key, and in here I can just tell it to either pick out the color that it sees in the background and replace it. See, and uh, now it goes gray and I click around here until I get all the colors. Um, but the only problem is that when I'm in a little wee box like this, as the light changes in the room, it basically stuffs up and it doesn't look too good. So let's go back to my green screen demo. What I recommend doing is uh, I have it on auto and I have the green screen lit up with my big light which I wish I had two on because I need one on the other side really to get that green screen nice and even and I don't know if you can see that but I've got this this light here I want two of those uh, and I have that quite low I have it on 25 and I have it on the color setting of 4400 and I can change that for warmness or white light or LCD light or whatever I want but I have it quite low because I it's tricky to explain but I want an even green all the way through so that um, the software can determine where the green is and where I am. So that's sort of how that kind of works. Um, now I'm just going to show you something cool. So what I have is I have, I'm just seeing if I can flip through to Minicam. It's a bit tricky to show you all this stuff because I'm using Minicam to record this very um, presentation. And this is what Minicam actually looks like. So what I've done is I've selected if I select this setting, um, 
it should actually make me look a lot different, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything at the moment. Oh, I'm stuffing this all up. I really am no good at this, so I don't think I should do this for work. I'm going to put that back how it was, select that one, and I'm going to click the correct image this time, <laughs> and now I'm going to show you some of the things that um, stuff up. So obviously I use a color picker, uh, but unfortunately it's picked out my head and I'm now black, which isn't very good. Uh, I could have a blurred background, I can have a replacement thing and I look like a green monster of edges and then I have a chroma key. So now I'm going to use auto and it basically does it all for me which is really cool. Uh, this here has basically means do you want me to have a nice sort of blurry look or do you want me to have a very sharp look? I've actually made it me as blurry as possible but what it's actually picking up is the background and making that nice and blurry. Here you can pick what type of um, tool that picks out your green screen automatically and to be honest I don't actually know the difference but from my experience I'm actually finding the YUV setting a lot easier. Spill, um, now see I'm a green monster and now I'm normal and I basically uh, am pretty cool. Now smoothness but basically allows me to um, smooth me down and get, make me all nice and round with no sharp edges. I have a little bit of that on you can see that if you look around my hair it's quite hard and not very nice and so I just put a little bit of smoothness in there and I'm pretty happy with that. So the difference between a green screen and not, um, if you look at this, you can see I am filming from my kitchen. And um, now you can see the things in the back looking a bit funny. So if I turn off the green screen mode, you see I look a lot nicer and I've got a very good lens on my camera which enables me to be nice and focused with a blurry background. But obviously when I go into workshop mode, I don't want to have me in a square box down there. I want to have me nicely cut out. So one minute, please call it. I'm just going to put my green screen back. Now, what I've done with mine is I have... basically put a bit of dowel on the bottom of my green screen to stretch it down a little bit because you want them flat as possible. I've also tried to put light evenly across it and I don't know if you can notice but over here you can see that that line that often is a nightmare and that's because that's the edge of the green screen. So I went and bought one on AliExpress. I bought a three meter by three meter I put a bit of dowel, I hang it from the ceiling and then I went and got another bit of dowel and basically wound it up off the floor so it sort of stretches it down. Ideally you'd want a screen that pulls down to get you a nice straight one but there's nothing out there about three meters by three meters. That basically means that if I did have a podcast setting and I wanted to have two people in it I could stand back here and still have a green screen. And still have a green screen. So think about that. Right. Okay, what else can I show you uh, quickly? Um, if you're doing a PowerPoint presentation. So uh, I've just, uh, you can, I use Mac, so I needed Keynote presentation and I just added that. I'm going to show you a few settings after. I'm just showing you what you can do with it if you want to. But technically speaking, I couldn't, it's quite hard multitasking when you're doing this sort of stuff and it gets confusing. But then I went and got my clicker and I thought now I can just flip between, if I can turn it on, that might help. Uh, so now where I've got my PowerPoint presentation open on my laptop off the screen and I can just flip through it. Uh, no, I can't. Flip through it. And, um, and I can basically go through the PowerPoint slides with the clicker. And um, so if I was doing a um, webinar, then I could literally just um, be in the screen and talk people through my PowerPoint presentation in real time. So that, that's worth its weight in gold with me. And also I don't have to be as big as you're looking at me in the screen. I can literally shrink me right down here if I want. So my head's out of the way. Uh, so I'm really impressed with what you can actually do. I am actually having problems right now flipping between screens and the like, but um, you get the gist of the idea. So product photography, um, you can, um, so what I've got problem here with now is I'm actually using, um, using my, my, my phone camera 
and since I've turned this off, it's stuffed up. So I'm going to go, I'm not going to even go there, but basically I've got a web browser and I can add different layers. Let's go into Minicam. I'm getting a bit confused here. So here I am and I've got the Minicam program open. Um, I'm going to show you some really funky stuff in here. So <laughs> in here I've got different layers, so I'm just going to walk through those. I can't show you them by opening them because it will take me to that layer and I'm using it to record right now. So Danny is basically me standing in front of the screen. Workshop is basically the one I use 90% of the time. And for the sake of doing this video today, I wanted to set up a few. Uh, Chrome. Uh, so Chrome is basically I just want a web browser without my face in it. iPhone will basically enable me to... Um, use my iPhone camera so I may have that set up before I go recording knowing that I could potentially have my iPhone camera set up as a secondary camera and I could talk to that and then go back to looking straight into my good camera you know how they do it I'm a real big believer of actually not doing tons of editing I don't do any editing this is pretty ad lib as I go and I basically use another wee program that you can't see which I will show you actually uh, if we go into workshop mode uh, I go to my website, I've got this article on my website which basically shows you my setup. So I had a friend of mine, Rob, who was trying to get a green screen going and he painted the wall and eventually he got pretty good at it. He's got no hair, he has a problem, keep your hair short, just a wee tip there. Uh, you can see some of the gear I've got, um, the microphone gear. So I've got a microphone just down here out of screen that catches my sound very good. I don't have to wear headphones or earpieces when talking. And there's my green screen as we've talked about. And here's my basic setup of what I'm actually doing, uh, which is pretty cool. So what was the object? There's my camera. Now, a lot of people don't tell you this sort of stuff, but I have got the full, uh, a beautiful camera that captures me. Uh, rather than using a webcam, I've gone and got a professional camera, and I've got a flash cable in the back that talks to goes into the back of the screen that you see there. Um, but what I did want to show you was actually uh, Stream Deck. So that's my iPad Pro on the right. And what that enables me to do is to have these preset buttons. So when I want to go to on this screen, to that screen, I try to look at you <laughs> and I click those buttons and it just alternates me between the screens at, at the same time. So it's really, really, really cool. All right, so let's go back to Minicam. And I just basically want to show you, um, yes, yeah, so I've got Keynote, Product 1, Cursor. Cursor is pretty cool. So cursor is good if you're in a hurry. So if I want to, anything that's under my mouse, it will follow me around. So if you're aware of that, you could theoretically say, I want you to go to my Facebook page. And when it loads, you can see anything that literally um, is under my key, uh, under my mouse, which means you don't have to. Um, it's quite good when you're opening up, say, like, attach this file. And then when you click those, those pop-up boxes don't show when you're recording. So you might just want to flip it into um, cursor mode and that enables people to follow you around as you move your cursor over the screen, which is pretty cool. So let's go back to Minicam and I want to tidy up my screen. I don't want to be green and I'm going to go through things. So here I am on Minicam. It's got my USB and, and now I'm going to go through to my green screen area. Going to turn on the green screen. Uh, I've told it to use the chroma key because I have a green screen. I've picked out a photo that I want as a background. I'm using audio and I've turned up the blur control to full. Um, I can't even say that word. I'll go rhythm. And I've picked YUV. And a spill correction, I've got that on max. And I've just got a little bit of smoothness. And that's how I get what I you are looking at at the moment. Other things that this program does, which is really, really cool. I used to have a problem. I used to have a user Zoom H6, and that is a recording software. And I'm going to lose you here if you're not up with the play of what I've been talking about recently. This is part of one of my workshops. Um, and then I couldn't get the sound when playing a YouTube video on my computer to come up into what I was recording and I had to use another bit of software called Loopback and that was a way around it but when I got my Zoom P8 um, um, pod track device it basically enables me to record any bit of sound coming in off a cell phone or a, tele, you know, a telephone call or anything that I'm listening to I can bring it in and record it so with 
Minicam at the moment, it's asking me my audio inputs. If I did want to record a YouTube video, I would have to add another audio input, but I don't need another piece of software to do so. So I click add and I could go USB and you can, and probably, you can hear probably hear my voice is now echoing. echoing. So you, so have, to you have to play around with those, those settings, settings a little, a little bit. bit. So I'm gonna turn, turn that off. But in here, the best thing about this bit of software is when I am talking, my voice is lagging because I'm recording this in 1080p uh, and the voice isn't as uh, high density maybe uh, as using um, video. So you find your voice lags a little bit. So I've turned my voice settings down to 220 milliseconds and that basically should put my voice around about in sync in case you're wondering how to do that. But the main point I'm making here is getting the audio and the video when recording uh, video clips is quite hard work. So this software does enable you to send a, a virtual cam signal. So if you did want to do a live Facebook broadcast, you could actually set up everything like I am and then broadcast this as a virtual camera and it will pick up your browser and your other camera and broadcast that as a signal to be picked up by uh, Facebook or YouTube. However, I don't use it for that. I find it a wee bit clumbersome and there are other software out there which I'll show you in another video that are better for doing that type of recording. Like you might be a podcast and you want to do a guest interview and that sort of stuff. All right, let's carry on. I'm starting to waffle a little bit. All right, so here you can play around obviously with the sound and capture the sound. The other thing you can do, you can have a screen. I did this earlier on, which was quite a laugh. So you can get a pencil and you can basically draw on the screen and um, you could draw a diagram while you're talking. So that's quite exciting. Um, I'm now gonna get my face back. So it's got a whiteboard function built into uh, Minicam, which would be quite good. Um, but yeah, like if you were using Zoom, you'd probably use that whiteboard function that Zoom has at the same time. Uh, other good things you can do, you can have a countdown timer. So let's put a timer on my face and I'll push countdown. You can set that timer to anything you want. Um, so that's a really neat function if you want a countdown timer. The other one I quite like, I've already shown you the green screen functions, um, but let's say you wanted to have um, something at the bottom pop up. You can, uh, you can have those sort of news pop up reels and turn them out when you're finished with them. Uh, so you can have those all preset ready to rock and roll. Effects, I'm not going to get into the effects, it's for kids, you're not a kid, but if you want to have Mickey Mouse ears on yourself when you're recording, you can do so. Uh, gallery, I presume that's where you can um, take snapshots of things you've gone and then you've got, have albums, have photos, you might even have videos that you want to play while you are um, maybe doing an intro or you might be doing a live broadcast, you might want to put a five minute video in there as your introduction to you and then you could have a countdown timer. I think that's where you put them. I don't use that functionality. And also you can have a favorites area. So when you've set up some of your settings, um, you can use different things. All right, so that's just a basic rundown on uh, Medicam. Have a wee play, download it uh, below. Uh, as I said, I am affiliated, appreciate the support, but I seriously do use this program every day. And I find it absolutely a blessing in disguise. So I have my studio all set up so that when I get in front of the camera, I can basically turn on my lights, uh, turn on my microphone, and I just press play on my iPad. Uh, sorry, I, I press record. And then when I push stop, which I'll do in a few seconds, I'll have a video that is all ready for production. And I don't fluff around so much putting it into editing software and fade in, fade outs and all that sort of stuff. Because I don't even notice, but this does actually have fade in, fade out. Well, slightly. You notice that I'm, I'm, I'm blending quite nicely. So it's pretty good software. Ask me any questions. If I can help, I'll certainly point you in the right direction. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.